free women's fasting calendar. Welcome back to my channel and in today's video, I'm going to talk about a little bit of a different subject um, still in the wonderful biohacking and health realm, but I'm not talking about peptides today. I am going to be talking to you guys about metformin and how metformin can be beneficial for people that are not type 2 diabetic. So if you are interested in wanting to know more about metformin, um, keep watching and I'm going to un pack all of this for you guys. So before I get into this discussion, this is going to be me covering why I love metformin. I talk about metformin all the time, like especially in like my stacking videos. And I always mention that metformin is something that I will always take and that I'm always going to recommend to people. And this is just me giving you my information and my knowledge that I have about metformin and why I like using it. But I already know that a lot of people are going to say, and they have asked me before about this, why not use berberine instead? And berberine is a great, um, it's a great supplement. But the thing is, is that berberine and metformin, yes, they do similar things, but the reason, and I still use berberine. I don't think I don't not use it. I still use berberine. I only use berberine if I'm going to be having more um, processed sugar. So that's only the only time that I really ever use berberine on top of using my metformin with it as well. But here's my reason why I think that metformin is going to be better than berberine. And these are my feelings. These are my thoughts. This is what I have learned and research. And this is what I have learned with my own body and working on my health and working with other women with their health journey is that you get a better response with metformin than you do with berberine. And the reason why is that metformin is going to work on different pathways, very similar pathways that berberine does, but in particularly metformin is going to hit the pathways that is going to interact with your gut and liver. Berberine does not target those pathways. So it's not, and if it does, it's just not going to be at the same effect that metformin is going to be able to do. So this is why I choose metformin in, um, as a supplement in my life and why I recommend it for my women that I coach and work with. So there is no right or wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with berberine. Again, this is just, I believe that metformin is going to be more effectively for the reason that it just hits different pathways that berberine does not. So let's get into this now that I kind of cleared that up and stated that in the beginning, because I know people are going to ask me that in the comments and I have no problem with you guys asking me questions, but this is just my reason why I like to use um, metformin instead of berberine because they do very similar things. So let's kind of talk and get into this. So metformin actually originates from a French um, lilac plant and it was traditionally used for um, blood sugar. And now obviously metformin has been chemically structured and synthesized as um, a compound, but the, this basically was designed for type 2 diabetics to help with their blood sugar. Proven in research, there's tons of research papers and information out there about metformin and how it can be beneficial for people that don't have type 2 diabetics and why I personally think that it is the most unused product. And it's actually interesting, guys, because um, certain states in the United States, certain states, you actually don't have to have a prescription for metformin. Some states, you can go into your pharmacy and ask your pharmacist, your pharmacist for metformin. And some states, that's not the case. You have to have a prescription for it. So it is interesting. I don't, I, I wish that wasn't the case, but it is um, I feel like it should just be a supplement that um, anybody can get if they want. But let's get into the reasons why 
people that are not type 2 diabetic can benefit from metformin. And basically, let's start with this first one. It is going to be the key for longevity and anti-aging. So because metformin is going to enhance your mitochondria health, which is crucial for maintaining energy levels, and it's also going to help the more mitochondria health you have going on, it's going to prevent aging to happen. Now, that also means with preventing aging, it's also going to help with metabolic diseases from happening. So it's going to slow all those processes down. So it's going to help with slowing down the aging system, the aging process, and it's going to help with um, just overall your mitochondria health, and which is going to be so crucial for aging. So there you go. It's going to help with be as the anti aging. Um, one of the other great benefits that I love, especially for women, is that metformin can help women manage their PCOS, um, which I did talk about in a, a previous video, but metformin does help with PCOS, um, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it can improve it because it's going to help with your insulin sensitivity. And that is one of the things that caught what PTOS is caused from is because of insulin sensitivity. Um, it's going to help reduce your um, anadrol levels, anadrol levels, and it's going to help regulate your menstrual cycle. So that is going to be a big bonus, especially for women with PCOS. Um, it also can help women with PCOS because it can actually improve their ovulation. So this is going to be great for women that are, you know, wanting to enhance their fertility. This is going to help increase your ovulation, which therefore you're going to have um, a higher chance of conception, which is amazing. Um, so that is one of my favorite benefits. Um, Another benefit that metformin is going to play a role, and it's going to play a role in your metabolic health, which is so, so important because living, you know, insulin sensitivity is what is going to help um, so much with your metabolic health. It's going to help, you know, keep your insulin levels in a better range. So it's going to help with that, which therefore it's also going to help with weight management. It's also going to help because you're living in more insulin um, control and your um, insulin sensitivities are in a better range. It's going to help with weight management. It's going to help reduce your appetite. It's also going to help promote fat loss, especially visceral fat, which Again, it's huge. And a lot of times, um, especially going kind of back to the PCOS, a lot of times women with PCOS do tend to carry more visceral fat in their ab, which is in the area of your abdomens. So that is going to make a huge benefit. Now, coming from somebody who does use metformin, and I started using metformin um, years prior to ever starting on a GLP-1, um, it is going to help with their appetite control, but it's not going to be the same as taking a GLP-1. Um, so I don't want you guys to think that like it's going to give you that heavy amount of an appetite suppression because it, it's not going to do that. So um, metformin also is going to help with um, preventing certain metabolic diseases from happening um, because it's going to help reduce your inf inflammation in your body. It's also going to help in make certain cells not um, grow. So it's going to help with that. It's going to help with the metabolic diseases. I can't say the C word on here because for whatever reason, um, the AI will pick it up, but it can help with that. It's also going to help with your cardiovascular health, which is important because it's going to help lower your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. And it's going, um, that's what's going to contribute to um, the risk of heart diseases. So that is going to be super beneficial. And also because metformin is going to be working and helping with anti-inflammatory properties, that overall is going to make a big difference with your cardiovascular health because um, 
again, cardiovascular health, like, like if you're inflamed, that's also going to affect your cardiovascular health as well. <clears throat> so um, there's also been some studies done um, how metformin can help with your cognitive function because it is going to help with neurodegen neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's. There are studies out, out there, guys, that it can, it will help with that. So like, you know, we hear so much more and I think um, a lot of people can say that they see so much more dementia and Alzheimer's um, being shown and it's happening with their loved ones and their families. And it is a heartbreaking disease to watch your loved one go through, go through that. But, you know, when we think about it is that, you know, basically those diseases are basically diabetes of the brain. So it's usually caused by insulin, um, overload of the insulin sensitivity of the brain. And so metformin can actually help because it's helping control your insulin, can actually help control, um, and act as neuroprotective. Also going to help uh, improving your thyroid function, which is going to be super important for hormone balancing. So um, your thyroid is like your powerhouse of your hormones. That's what keeps everything going. And, you know, metformin is going to help with the function of your thyroid. So therefore your hormones are going to be balanced. Um, another great benefit that metformin is going to do, and I'm going to dive in a little bit more about this one, is that it's going to help so much with your gut health. And a lot of people um, don't realize this when they start taking metformin, um, is that it really helps with your gut microbiomes. And that is so, so important. So it's going to help with your gut microbiomes. It's going to help um, just with the function of your gut, it's going to help with inflammatory. This is a great, great supplement to do if like you have a leaky gut, um, because it's going to help with a chronic in inflammation. And this is also just going to be so beneficial for the gut because one of the things is that it does help with, um, and a lot of people, either get scared or they get nervous about taking metformin is because they hear like, oh, it's going to upset your stomach. You're going to have really bad side effects of like diarrhea and bloat and whatnot. And it's because it is reacting and changing your gut microbiomes, but in a positive way. So think of it as a way that it's going in and it's actually cleaning out your gut microbiomes that aren't supposed to be there. And it's a very similar to some people get the same side effect when they start taking probiotics for the first time because a probiotic is going to help with your gut microbiomes. So therefore metformin is it's similar. Metformin is similar in the way. So a lot of people will complain that like, you know, one, they're scared. Two, they start taking it and they have really, you know, they have really bad bloat or they have, um, diarrhea or runnier or softer stool. And the the key is with metformin is that what's really important, what I have found, what has worked the best for myself and for women that I worked with is starting off with a lower dose for two weeks. Let your body and let your gut microbiomes go through that cleansing effect is what I like to call it. I like to think of it as more of it's cleansing. It's cleansing out all of those old gut microbiomes that are not good for my body that have been stored in there. So I like to think of it as it is just like flushing all that out. And um, that's why you want to start off with a lower dose. And I always I always started off when I started taking metformin is taking um, a lower dose. And then I would take it at night and I'd give myself about two weeks for my GI system to kind of get used to it again. And then like once I kind of got past the point um, of having like runnier stool, I then was able to go up on a regular maintain um, regular maintenance dose of metformin. And that has kept me so regular. I have dealt with um, constipated easily. Like if I'm out of town or away from home, like I don't like don't like going to the bathroom. And one that's so great is that metformin has really been able to keep 
me regular to where like I don't have to worry that I'm not going to not be able to go because I had the metformin there. And for me, um, it's just, it was, it's been so beneficial and I see such a big difference, just like an inflammation standpoint in my body. So, um, and especially my GI system, like I cannot tell you enough how much that's changed my life. Um, 500 milligrams and then, um, in the morning and then I would bump that up. Um, once my gut kind of got used to it and two weeks later, I bumped it up to, I now take, um, 500 milligrams in the morning and 500 milligrams at night. So, um, that has been a big, big game changer for my gut and overall. So overall that, you know, I get a lot of, you know, questions on like why metformin instead of berberine. And I just want to clarify like how that is more beneficial, how metformin is beneficial for people that are not type two diabetics. And I just really believe that, you know, living an insulin controlled life and is the longevity and the key of living longer. So why would I not take something that has so many great benefits in order to help me with that. And, um, you know, I think also too, it just, it really does make a big impact too on inflammatory markers and, um, has helped me. So there you have it guys. That's my opinions. That's my views on why people that are not type two diabetic should be taking metformin and what benefits they could be getting, um, and missing out on it. So, um, you know, as always, um, guys go and research and go and, um, read up more because I think, um, we're going to see, be seeing more of this coming out, especially with, um, some of the studies that are out there now with metformin and, um, Alzheimer's and dementia. So, um, yeah. So if you guys have tried metformin, um, and you had a hard time with taking it with just the GI, um, side effects. Um, just know that, you know, you just keep working your way past it. And within a few weeks, like it will come back down. Um, and a lot of times, like when people do have that reaction, it is because of just a lifestyle diet change that needs to occur. You know, the more, um, processed foods that you're eating, heavier, ha like richer foods, heavy fat, fat foods, like that's going to be harsher for your body to digest and break down. And that's not going to really be benefiting you. So if you're eating, if you're eating like garbage, you're going to feel the effects more, but that's where you need to make the lifestyle change of changing your diet, um, in order to kind of help you get past that, um, that phase of that gut cleansing part of metformin. And, um, you know, even somebody like me, I would, was already eating super clean and healthy and I still kind of had that effect from it. But, um, just really keep, I would say just keep trying to work past that. And usually within two weeks is like most of the time when I feel like a lot of people have felt better and kind of feel like their GI system's back on track. So, um, so yeah, there you go. There you have it guys. Um, sorry if I was a little rambly today. Um, that is my thoughts and my opinions on why people that are not type 2 diabetics should be taking metformin. So, um, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Um, don't forget to check out my link in tree to get, to check out all of the different places I like to get my, um, peptides, my women's peptide cheat sheet and the women's peptide course. And also you can find in there how to reach out and how to get in touch with me on my website. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to share more topics with you and my thoughts and views in the next video.